You know what's in this box? Something really cool. This is the dynamic LED trunk spoiler with sequential turn signals from Pathfinder LED. Let's open it up and take a look. Now, I've already looked at it, so I know how cool it is. This fits on the trunk of your 2018 plus Honda Goldwing Tour. It only works on the Tour model, not on the non-Tour model, but it fits on the trunk and only if you don't have a trunk rack installed. Darn! Why did I install that trunk rack? Because I would much rather have this on my bike than the trunk rack, even though I do have the nice Pathfinder LED uh, multifunction LED light underneath. I'd much rather have this. This is very sleek, very cool looking, very nice design. And I'm going to have to install this on my buddy Don Smith's bike because he doesn't have a trunk rack. And I'm really excited to get out there and let's uh, get this thing installed. Let's get to the garage. The design of this new dynamic LED spoiler from Pathfinder LED was inspired by the clean lines of the latest generation of Porsche's rear lighting. The design is a perfect match for the 2018 Plus Honda Goldwing. The enhanced LED running lights are always on for increased day or nighttime visibility. The sequential amber turn signals increase rider visibility and give the bike a really modern look. The dynamic brake lights flash whenever the brakes are applied for even more attention. So now, let me show you how to install this on your 2018 Plus Honda Goldwing. Here's a list of tools required for this installation. I should also mention that this video is sponsored by Pathfinder LED. This spoiler is designed to fit the 2018 to 2020 Honda Goldwing Tour. 2021 and later Goldwings have larger trunks and would require a different spoiler. Check the SoCal Moto Gear website for more information on the 2021 Plus Goldwing spoiler. You'll notice that Don has a XM antenna mounted on his trunk and a CB antenna on the right trunk panel. The first step is to remove the seat from the motorcycle. Now, if you want extreme details on how to take the bike apart and put it all back together, check out my Goldwing maintenance videos. I'll put a link in the description of this video. With the seat removed, now we're going to remove this trunk front lower panel. There are two screws inside the trunk that we need to remove. You can use a Phillips head screwdriver or a JIS screwdriver. As you remove the screws, hold the panel with one hand while you remove the screws with the other. You can kind of push it toward the rear of the bike to get the screws out, and then the panel just lifts right out. On the underside of the trunk lid, we need to remove these six self-tapping screws using a JIS or Phillips screwdriver. There's also a single self-tapping screw on each side of the passenger armrests. Now, if you have Honda's extended passenger armrest, there might actually be two 5mm socket bolts here you'll need to remove. Disconnect the heated seat connector on top of the trunk lid and remove the passenger backrest. The trunk lid is held onto the hinges with six 5mm socket bolts that we're going to need to remove. Use a 5mm Allen wrench or a socket and a ratchet to remove these 5mm socket bolts and make sure you keep them separate from the other bolts. Now what I like to do, if I'm doing the job by myself, I'm going to have to hold this trunk, make sure it doesn't fall off as I remove the last bolts. So I leave one bolt in place on each side. I'm going to go ahead and remove two bolts on each side. Now I'm going to leave the upper one in place on the left side of the bike because it's going to be easier for me to reach from the other side of the bike. And if this is your first time removing the trunk lid, these bolts can make quite a loud sound when you remove them the first time. They can be pretty tight. 
I'm going to go ahead and loosen this last bolt, but I'm not going to remove it. I'm going to leave it in place, and you'll see what I do here. I hold my hand underneath the trunk lid to kind of hold it and steady it as I'm removing these last two bolts. It's not that heavy, so you can do it by yourself. If you have a helper, it's also nice. So here I'm going to remove the last two bolts and then the trunk lid will simply come off. Another pro tip is to magnetize the tip of your Allen wrench so that when you remove the bolt, it just sticks to the end of the Allen wrench. Now you'll need a large flat surface to work on the trunk lid and I'm going to spread down a towel. You want to keep a soft surface, carpeted or towel, so that you don't scratch the paint on your trunk lid. And then we can set the trunk lid on here and begin working to remove the trunk liner. We need to protect these two little plastic tabs on the very top of the trunk lid and keep them from breaking when we turn the trunk lid over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll up a shop towel and put it right in this position. So when I turn this upside down, you will see that it prevents those little tabs from hitting the tabletop and becoming damaged because we're going to be doing a lot of pressing on this trunk lid as we work on it. There are two self-tapping screws that hold each of the striker bars in place on the rear of the trunk. We're going to go ahead and remove all four of these screws and we'll remove these striker bars as well. Now take note when you remove these uh, strikers that they are kind of bent at a slight angle toward the rear of the bike so that when you go to reinstall these, you want to make sure you get them in at the right angle. Now, I like to store the screws inside these strikers before I set them off to the side. There are seven more self-tapping screws that need to be removed before we can release the inner trunk liner. Now I'm going to speed up this part of the video so you don't have to sit there and watch me undo a bunch of screws and remind you one more time to check out my maintenance videos if you need more help. Okay, you want to be standing in this position because you're going to start to remove this liner from the lid itself. And what you're going to do is start with these little corners. Basically, this is the front corner of the trunk lid. And this little black inner liner, we're going to start pushing up on it to release, to release it from the lid itself. And you'll hear it, you'll hear some cracks and pops as this uh, liner starts to come loose from this lid. It's a very, very tight fit. So let's just start lifting. There you go. Now, once you get the corner separated from the trunk lid, you want to begin kind of working your way down toward the very rear of the trunk. And like I said before, it's a very, very tight fit. And you'll notice these little uh, bosses where the screws go in and the lid fits tightly around those. So that's part of the reason this lid kind of sticks to the, or the liner, I should say, sticks to the lid because that has to all come loose. What you don't want to do is try to get a screwdriver in here and pry this out. You'll really, you could crack your trunk lid, you could damage the plastic. The key here is patience. It just takes time for this liner to come loose from this lid. So I like to get both my hands inside in between the liner and the trunk lid and just kind of work them down, walk them down and release those bosses and they make a loud noise when it finally does come loose. In fact, you may think you've broken something, but that's just the way these things fit together. And now you can see the liner is free from the trunk lid. Man, what a job. Follow the Pathfinder LED instructions, steps 19 through 21, to attach the sub-harness to the inner trunk liner. Now back inside the trunk, we need to remove these three body clips on the right-hand side at the bottom of the trunk. You'll notice when you remove these body clips that the one at the very front is larger and longer than the other two. You'll need to know that when you go to replace them. We also need to remove the three self-tapping screws on the right side of the trunk. 
as you can see here. And make sure you keep these separate. These are somewhat shorter screws. You won't want to confuse them with any longer screws. You'll notice I've already removed the two 5mm socket bolts that hold the CB antenna in place. The antenna will remain on the side cover when we release it. Remove the two self-tapping screws on top of the trunk side panel shown here. Now keep these screws separate. They are a different size than the other screws holding the side panel in place. Remove the trunk side panel. I'm going to first start by pressing up on that little center panel and pulling toward the outside to release some tabs. You see them starting to come loose here. And once that come loose, I just kind of let it sit there and then we begin working from the front of the bike to work this panel around that trunk hinge. The speaker cover and the side panel are all one piece. They come off together. And you just have to kind of uh, work with this to get it around that hinge. The plastic is a little pliable, so you can kind of pull out on it in places. And just take your time and be careful as you remove the side panel. Now, if your bike has a CB radio antenna, you will leave that in place on the side panel. It'll all come off together and it remains in place. You'll notice there's a wire connected and you just leave it there. And then I'm going to get a rag or some paper towels to kind of protect the paint. And I'm just going to let this side panel hang right here. I actually ended up opening the saddlebag door and just let it hang inside the saddlebag uh, so that it doesn't scratch the paint as you can see here. Templates are provided in the kit for marking the holes for drilling in the trunk lid. However, should you need to reprint these templates from files on the Pathfinder LED website, you need to make sure your printed templates are accurate. It's very important that you check the size of the templates that you printed out. You'll notice a little guide on each template, and that guide has to be exactly 5 centimeters wide. You'll notice I'm double-checking mine. If yours is not 5 centimeters wide, go back and check your printer settings and reprint those templates. And then you simply use a pair of scissors to cut the templates out. You want to make sure these are the correct size because you're going to be using these as a guide to drill into your trunk lid. You also want to cut out the little holes, as you can see on the template. You'll notice some circles have been molded into the plastic of the underside of the trunk lid, and we're going to use these as a guide for our template so that we know exactly where to drill our holes. So you basically just line the template up with those guides, and here I'm going to do the one on the right side of the motorcycle using that template. You can see the large circle at the top and the small one at the bottom. And then where you see the crosshair, that's where we're going to make our mark. I'm using a small pick, and I'm just going to press down on that crosshair to just kind of mark a position where I'm going to drill my pilot hole. Now I'll come back later and drill a pilot hole using a very small drill bit into this mark. Here I'm using the template to mark the center of the trunk lid. This is going to be a larger hole, but I will again drill a small pilot hole first. Okay, on this side, even though there's no print, I can see where I marked my hole uh, through the paper on uh, the right side trunk lid. So I'm just lining these up. And I've got it uh, where I'm comfortable with. And now I'll just use the hole in the paper as my guide to where to mark the next drill mark. Gets in there pretty good. Now, after drilling a small pilot hole, here I'm using a 3 16 inch drill bit to drill my hole on the left and right side. Uh, this is equivalent to a 5 millimeter hole. You can also use a 5 millimeter bit. And here I'm using a step bit to drill the 3 8 inch or 10 millimeter hole in the center of the trunk lid. And here are the three holes after they've been drilled. Now I'm going to feed the connectors from the spoiler one at a time through that center hole in the top of the trunk lid. They'll only fit one at a time. And once you work those in, you're ready to kind of place the spoiler into position. 
normally before mounting this, we would remove this adhesive to stick it down to this trunk lid. But since this is a prototype, we may end up replacing this with the production version. I'm not gonna use the double-sided tape. I'm just gonna use the two little screws on the ends. Follow the instructions that come with your Pathfinder LED spoiler to use the adhesive strip underneath. It explains how you peel it back and stick it down to the trunk lid. From the underside of the trunk lid, I can move the spoiler back and forth until I see the hole on the spoiler line up with the hole that I drilled earlier. And then use one of those four millimeter screws that come in the kit to secure that side. And then I go to the other side and do the exact same thing. Now that the spoiler is installed, we're ready to reinstall our trunk liner. Now you'll notice I've used a piece of gaffer tape to secure the wiring harness from the spoiler to the underside of the trunk lid to kind of hold the connectors in place. And now we need to connect the two connectors from the spoiler to the sub harness. Just match up the colors of the wires so that you connect the correct connectors. Now you're ready to reinstall the trunk liner into the trunk lid. And you want to start at the very back of the trunk liner and work your way toward the front as I'm doing here. You'll be pressing down to make sure those little bosses are flush with the trunk liner. You'll also notice on this installation there's an extra wire loom coming out with the Pathfinder sub harness. That is the Honda trunk sub harness that's being used for the trunk light in this particular installation. Once you've reinstalled the trunk liner by reattaching all of those self-tapping screws underneath that we removed earlier, you can now reinstall the trunk lid onto those hinges using those six silver five millimeter socket bolts. So here's what the Pathfinder cable looks like when it comes out underneath the trunk on the right side of the motorcycle. Now I've got it zip tied to my trunk sub harness as you can see here and it just goes down like this kind of in front of the trunk and when it comes out over here and I'll use a couple more zip ties to secure it and if you don't have a trunk sub harness you don't have to worry about this you'll just route the wire the same way you can see I'm routing it down here, kind of next to the speaker, or above the speaker. And here, um, this is basically how it's going to fit. And all the wires kind of tuck up underneath that speaker. If you can see there, it'll go up underneath the speaker and come out over here. Here's my wire right here, underneath the seat. And then we'll zip tie these again and then use a piece of tape to tape it to the side of the speaker here okay so here you see my wires they're zip tied together to the uh, this is the bundle for the trunk sub harness this is my pathfinder harness and it comes down here and you can see on the side of the speaker and then all the wires come out over here to replace the trunk side panel, start at the front of the bike and hook it around that hinge area and then work your way toward the back. You want to make sure to keep looking underneath to make sure all of those tabs are underneath that center trunk panel. When putting that side panel back on, make sure your wires coming from the trunk liner fit into this little slot. Uh, you can kind of pull that plastic apart. It kind of uh, is, is bendable, and you can pull it apart enough to get those cables to fit up into that slot. Now you can begin replacing all of the self-tapping screws and fasteners that hold this trunk side panel in place. Basically, you're just going to reinstall everything in the reverse order that you installed it. When you reinstall the body clips, remember that the largest, longest body clip goes at the very front. 
Replace the two self-tapping screws that hold the lower front trunk panel in place. And then replace the passenger backrest. For a true plug and play installation, you're going to need this Pathfinder plug and play harness. This lets you connect up to four Pathfinder LED products into this one harness and it makes it a plug and play installation. Now I already have that harness installed on Don's Goldwing, but then I have a video showing you how to install this plug and play installation. I'll put a link to it in the uh, upper corner of this video if you want to go watch it. Very simple to do. You just basically connect it in line to your saddlebag connectors and then we simply plug the two wires coming or the two connectors coming from the spoiler into this plug and play harness. So here I've got the Pathfinder plug and play harness connector. This is coming from the left saddlebag. These four come from the left saddlebag. And I've got my other four coming from the right saddlebag uh, plug and play connector. And we're simply going to plug these in. It is a plug and play installation. These are my two connectors from the uh, Pathfinder LED spoiler. If you just look at the color of the wires, you'll see a blue and red wire and you just match it up. In this case, it's the left side. So this will plug into the left side connector like this. Very simple. And then we'll plug the other connector, which has the yellow and the white wire. That will go on the right side. As you can see here, there is a yellow and a white wire on one of these harness connectors and we simply plug it in. Now, I'll of course go back and route all of these wires under the frame to make a nice, neat installation. One very important final note. When closing your trunk lid, do not press down on the spoiler. Always pull back on the rider backrest and press down on the Honda logo to shut the trunk. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little bell icon so YouTube will notify you of new videos when they become available.